on my hair. Uh, out of all the things people hate in 3D modeling and animation, uh, one of the things at the top of the list is weight painting. I must warn you about that, although our character is fairly simple. So I'm going to grab our character, and then grab the, uh, the bones, the armature, in object mode for both of them, and hit Control P. And I'm going to go down and hit with automatic weights. And so now your character is actually connected to these bones. Uh, that sounds exciting. Um, this will be mostly for entertainment purposes at the moment. If you go into pose mode, you get to see what it looks like to move the character uh, when he does not have the correct weight painting. It's said with automatic weights, but those don't always work. So I'm going to go down here to my widgets and hit this curved one to do rotations. And I'm going to change it to normal. Let's just grab his head. And check this out. That looks natural. Nice, good movement there. Let's go ahead and grab the spine and just let him lean back a bit. Oh yeah, that is good. I'm going to hit Alt-R to reset that. Imagine what's, what's happened to the fingers. Oh, surprisingly, the fingers are doing alright. So as far as weight painting this character, uh, automatic weights are doing pretty good. Up oh, there with the blade on that hand. Let's try and curl one of these fingers. Oh, that didn't work. Let's mess with this cape, because it definitely doesn't know what that is. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Wonder what I thought of the root bone. Absolutely nothing. And lastly, let's try one of the legs. Cool. Okay, so it seems like it's working, um, but you can also see that it's not working perfectly. Let me go ahead and save. Uh, this is because Blender by itself does not know what needs to be attached to what bone. So I'm going to click on Ezio with a right click and I'm going to hit Control Tab or you can change it from down here to go into weight paint mode. And what we're going to do is I'm going to click on his head bone and it lights up everything that that head bone is in control of. The, the blue is what it is not controlling and the red is what it is controlling 100%. So if we go over here, you have your object panel. Now let's scoot over to this object data panel. And you'll see there's a bunch of vertex groups in here now from the armature. Yeah, that is just fine. This is con this, uh, each of these correspond with each bone that you set up. And so we are messing with the head bone. And we are in the basis shape key. That is also good to note. Uh, I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. Deselect everything. And with the head selected, uh, I can hit select, and it'll show me every face or vertice that is being moved by the head. I'm going to go ahead and hit remove. Uh, grab a piece of the hood like this. Grab a piece of the face, a piece of the hair, and a piece of the mouth. And hit control L. And that has selected all of his head there. And with this uh, influence bar here that says weight set to 1, I'm going to hit assign. So if we tab out of edit mode now, you'll see that the entire head is red, meaning that that bone will move this entire red portion 100%. So now move on down to the neck. Um, the neck, I don't think it was messing up too much. Uh, it wasn't moving uh, this little collar thing. So I don't think I'll mess with the actual stuff on the neck. So I'm going to grab the, or at least the top of the collar here, the top piece. 
and I'm going to change this weight to say like 0 0.7, 7 0.4, just kind of did that randomly. Now if I go like this, it kind of follows. I see some other things moving, so I'm going to deselect all, hit select, and I see some face, Let's see this face here, and that is about it. Everything else seems good, it's just this one vertice here. I'm going to hit remove. But there is a vertex in here that has some paint on it, so remove. There we go. And now if I do this, uh, that collar mainly follows his neck, so that's pretty nice. I'm going to go ahead and save. And then let's move on to the spine here, which uh, I think was doing pretty well. So I see that it has left some of the other color and the belt up here, so we do have to make some adjustments, unfortunately. So I'm going to hit select, and I'm going to hit remove. I'm just going to do this manually. Uh, what I will do is I will hit alt and select this loop of vertices, and I will give this uh, about that 0.7, hit assign. Then I'll grab these here. Basically, we are going to select. Uh, let's see. It is hard to see in there. Let's do this. Let's grab my brush selector. Just go ahead and start selecting things like this. Take a look around now. We do not want it on this hood, but we can take that out afterwards. Don't really want it on that, I don't think. No, we probably do. This is uh, some tough decisions here. And you know, I did such a good job at connecting everything together so that they weren't floating in place. Um, kind of wishing I didn't do that now. So I'm going to go ahead and assign this area 100%. Then grab the hood, hit Control L, and uh, hit Remove. And let's go ahead and see what's happened here. If I rotate him back. Something is moving funny. So I think that is moving well. I think it is this arm here not having control over the band oiler that is the problem at the moment. When you're doing weight painting, it's often a good idea to start from the limbs and then go inward. Um, it's up to you. I mean, it's, it's best to do it that way. So if we take a look at the arm now. Uh, Seems like that is moving all right. It's not pulling anything else around it. It's just having trouble with the band oiler. So let's see if I see what is selected here. Um, go ahead and grab this area. Don't need that one. This face up here. These faces on the side. Top of the cape here. Got to get these sides too. I'll get my brush select for that. Looking good. Maybe I'll grab this one right like that. And let's go ahead and assign it 100%, see if that has helped anything. And now if I move it, most of it follows. Let's see, let's rotate along the Z, go back and forth. Seems okay to me. 
does move the cape, we can go back into edit mode and take the weight down to about that 0.7 again and assign it to this one. Sign there. And uh, see, there was something else that was moving sharply. No, I think that's going well. Uh, control S to save. Move further down the arm. Let's actually see how it rotates. It has forgotten the blade in there. Something on the back is moving. I don't see it now. Oh wait, what's this? What is that? That is. Let's see, was there a belt back there? Where did that come from? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and deselect all of them, hit select, so I can see what is being moved here. I'll go ahead and hit remove. I think I can just do this manually as well. I think I see what was being moved there. So I'm going to alt select this row. And because we have triangular elbows, it is having trouble selecting all the way around again. So I just kind of have to select it by myself. Select these faces. All the way around. Then I assign it 100%. Grab this metal bit and the blade. Control L. 100%. Except, um, see, select, put it up to 100%, hit assign. It's looking alright. Let's see. Grab this one. Yeah, there's a. It seems like this bone is pulling too much over in this section, but uh, there's not much we can do about that since uh, we don't have much geometry. So it might just be okay for now to leave it like that. Let's see, shoulders are not something I move often. Let's see if I move this back along the x axis. The cape is being left behind. What else is being left behind? I'm going to take my brush, come over to this add section, uh, my strength all the way up. I'm going to scroll in here to this little bit sticking out. And do that, do that. And sometimes you'll come across weird things. Uh, you can hit normalize all under the toolbar and that helps sometimes. So uh, now that seems pretty alright to me. Nothing's really coming out of place unless I put them into some extreme angles. I mean the cape still could move a bit more but we could move the uh, floating bone to compensate for that. I'm going to save there, see what the hand does. Um, it's a little weird. Okay, tab into edit mode for the hand, hit select. Those are some weird things to move. I'm going to hit remove. And then the fingers are parented to this bone. So we don't have to put the fingers in this, but I will grab these vertices here. Probably these four. Notice how it didn't let me select any of those because of my clicking problem. See, it won't grab the thumb.
just like that, and I'll assign it 100%. So now, it moves about like that. And I know that I put 100% on a lot of things, that isn't necessarily how weight painting is supposed to be, but because our character is so simple and the geometry is so low, uh, that's about what we gotta do. Uh, I think I'll take my vertex select now, just grab the edges of this, and paint that on. 100%. There we go. It's important that that blade doesn't move with the hand. And so now we can go into this here. That does some wacky stuff. Deselect everything. Select, hit remove. I'm going to go back to my face editor. Just kind of select this bit of the thumb. Yeah, let's, uh, let's try that. Let's see what happens. Maybe that bone didn't belong there, but we'll see. Let's see a sign. So that pulls that in there. So if I go to edit mode, And then take these two vertices and remove them. That should do just fine with the thumb. And go ahead and save again. Grab the next portion, which is this one. And this should only control this set of faces here. So I'm going to hit select. I'll just remove everything. Where did my vertex group go? Sign on this. Grab this one, select everything, remove, and then select this, sign. So now I should have complete control over the thumb, except uh, this isn't parented to that, which may be a better idea than parenting it to this. So if I go to object mode and then go back to just the armature, tab in, and hit, grab this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, hit Alt P, uh, clear parent, grab this one, give it to this parent. Uh, actually, let's make that connected. So connected. Grab these two, connected, grab these two, connected, grab these two, connected, these two, connected, I didn't get it. And remember to do this on the other side now as well. And then let's grab this one and connect it to that one. We got to clear its parent first. Clear parent. Connected. And so, like I said, you have to do that on the other side now. Unless the x axis mirror took care of that, we can check real quick. Because I did flip the names, I knew that. Yay, it did. Good thing I flipped those names. I told you it'd come in handy. Just saved me a uh, couple minutes there. Save. Leave edit mode. Grab my meshy thingy. So now we can see how this works. Thumb comes out like this. This uh, controls how much that goes in and out. And then here's your other digit of the thumb. Grab the finger here. Remove everything from it. And just give it this loop. Assign. Grab this finger. Remove everything from it. Be sure I did that. And then give it this loop and this face. Moving right along. 
Remove. 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 And I go back in here and give it this sign. Assign. And assign. Make sure the weight's at 100%. Go to the top one here. Assign. 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 Alrighty, I think uh, our hand uh, has complete control now. We've got control over every finger and the digits of the finger. Pretty nice. Enjoying that. And like I said, we're trucking right along. Uh, I won't show you how to do the other hand because you can just mirror this and I'll do that later on. I'll go ahead and do this section of the arm though since they aren't even. I'm going to select everything and remove it. Go grab this and hit assign. Grab this and the blade on the inside. That was the blade. Control L and assign. Uh, the arm uh, already seems to be moving just fine. Don't think I changed this one much either, besides the band oiler. Uh, this hip region down here, uh, the belts and stuff aren't following it. So if I grab this face, this face, Control L. Let's try 100%. So move this back. It's a little, little wonky. I'm not sure why one's going further than the other. That's pretty odd. What's the back doing? Yeah, just fine, I guess. So maybe I can give this one less paint. Uh, this is really weird. I bet I know the reason. See, that has no... Uh, this, this hip bone has no power over the belt. This hip bone, if I hit select also has no power over the belt. Okay, I was wrong. That's interesting. That one has no power over the belt, and so nothing appears to have power over the belt. I really don't know why it's doing that. I also need to give some here. Looking good to me. I'm gonna hit save. Let's go back to this cape now. Definitely remove everything it has because that is just weird. Remove. And so now we want uh, this section here. Selecting the other side, that's good. Let's do 
about something like this, maybe. Give that 100%. Let's just see what happens. If I rotate that, kind of flaps the cape a little bit. I think that worked out quite nicely. Uh, my throat feels dry and I don't really have much of a drink tonight. Uh, well, we're almost done with the rigging and uh, it's only taken about an hour. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. The, well, I stretch here for a moment. The, the good part about 3D animating is once you have it set up, you can always use it. It's not like 2D animation where you have to redraw every single frame or every couple of frames to kind of have it tween them together. Uh, once you have it, you have it, and you can always use it. And so that's why an hour isn't much for something like this. Let's grab the hips and see where those are at. I think that'll do just fine for me because I won't use the hips too often. They could use some control over the belt, maybe. Let's see if I just give it the whole belt, get it like 0.5. Let's see what that does. That looks good. Give it the whole belt on this side. Sign that same number. And that should look good too. I like that. And let's see now. The leg is probably not going to be right. Let's see. That actually wasn't bad. I'm not sure what this is though. Is that, that was just another little pad there. I like go into edit mode, grab this face and give it 100%. That should be about all I need to do. It is so hard to see right now. So I pull this up and that thing went back in the leg again. So I'm going to come over here and hit normalize all. And it brought it back up. That came out surprisingly well. See how the shin's doing? Pretty good. Got a nice knee there. On the toes. Doing pretty good too. Might go in on the toes and select it here. Yeah. Let's remove that and give it just this face and the buckle. Hit assign. So now that should do just that bit in the front. Let's see how the heel's doing. Perfect. That is going well. I'm going to hit A twice to select everything and hit Alt R to put the rotation back at uh, where it normally is supposed to be. Let's uh, see how this leg's doing. Uh, seems about the same. I'm surprised at how well the legs went. I'll grab that face in the front, give it 100%. Normalize all. Some things are phasing through each other, but that's not quite a big deal when you have such a low poly uh, character because there's not really much you can do to avoid that. Knee's looking pretty good too. Gonna save. Uh, go in here. Nope. Give me that vertex group back. Remove everything. And then select this again. Sign 100%. Check that real quick. Looking good. Pull this one back. Also looking good. Grab everything again. Alt R. Save my project. Now we just have the root bone, which I think uh, should have control by parenting. See, if I were to grab this uh, spine bone here 
and pull it, you can see that some things aren't attached in here, which uh, actually makes me pretty sad. It means I'm still missing something. Um, they aren't connected, so we need to parent some things. I'm going to grab this section of the cape, see what it does. It moves this around, but it's also not moving the leg around, so I might just say that's all right. But the same case over here. This one is what's touching that belt. That's why that's causing so much problem. So I'm going to go over here and remove this off the belt. And then come back in here. And see if the belt still has trouble. Okay. That seems good to me. And then back at this one. That's control on that back there. Doing all right. I mean, you could go into edit mode and just choose these bottom faces if you want to get it absolutely perfect. Uh, you, you might be able to tell by now that I'm getting a little tired of talking. So I'll pull this one back. It seems to be doing pretty good. It moves the cape a little bit, which is just fine. But it's not moving anything on the leg, so I'm, I'm quite surprised at how well this weight painting actually came out to be. So now if I were to take this bone and those two and pull them out, I am missing a few sections here, some vertices. This one, which appears to be, what does that appear to be? It is not a part of the hood. Let's see if I hit normalize all. Yeah, nothing changed. So if I grab this, say, spine bone, or even let's do a shoulder here, you can see it kind of has a red line on this one. I'm going to go up here to my add, weight, strength 100, and just put it over that, and now it's gone. As far as other things, we have part of the belt here. I'm going to grab the, the uh, spine here. Go ahead and put that there. I'm going to Alt G to bring everything back. Of course, uh, select everything and then hit Alt G to bring it back. Everything's looking good now. And so now what we have to do is uh, get that parenting done. So I'm going to go into Object Mode, select the armature, and Edit Mode. And let's see. I'm going to take the hip and parent it to that. Uh, let's go ahead and keep offset. Parent it to this. Let's see, this hip is now also parented because of the the mirror there. And what bugs me is uh, how that line grabs the tail of this bone. I really wish it would grab this one, which uh, makes me wonder if I want to connect these. I did something like this once before, and those weren't connected. Oh, that is why I didn't connect it. It's because it connected it to the tail there, which is not what I want at all whatsoever. Okay, I will grab this one and parent it to the spine as well, keeping the offsets of that one, keeping the offsets from the back, keeping the offsets. Grab this cape thing. Parent it to the spine, keeping the offset. And I'm going to take the spine and parent it to the root, keeping the offset. So now technically, I can grab the root and in pose mode, and everything will move. And that is what is so helpful to have that root bone, is that we can have him do a run cycle or a walk cycle in place to where he's not moving along the ground and have it just repeat that over and over so that we don't have to constantly make it and then we can just move this root bone uh, along or even have it track to a curve to have him run along the curve uh, which is very helpful with uh, uh, things such as running and it, it's a very helpful thing to have in many occasions. So I'm going to save our character is uh, completely weight painted up except for the this hand over here which makes me sad 
because I said I would do it off camera, but my camera isn't the best camera. Let's see if I can do it really quickly. Remove everything. This, 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 this. This, 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 this. This, 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 this. This, this, and you know, uh, I probably am going to be editing these tutorials uh, in a video editor, so I might just do this in time lapse. If you are hearing me talk right now, that means I failed to do that. Move, move. Alrighty, and I'm back. We have completely and fully rigged up our character. The only thing I didn't really take much of a look at are these shoulders here. Um, I don't really use shoulders too much. You might. I have a horrible ring in my ear now. You know, the, these tutorials, you can tell um, the, the level of professionalism just dropping like a rock after about an hour of recording. You can see my clock down here if I haven't edited that out. But um, I hope that hasn't been much of a problem for all of you. Uh, I hope that you can still enjoy my tutorial nonetheless. Uh, I've been very excited about it, but uh, I'm more excited about the end result than I am the, the process of getting there. So what I think I want to do is I'm going to save for one and just you know put him into a pose because we worked so hard on posing him. I'm going to uh, have his arms out a little bit. I saw this in a picture today. I was looking up some uh, reference footage for uh, the next section of the tutorial uh, where I'm going to show you how to actually animate him into a little a little thingy, a little video for YouTube. Uh, one thing that you could do on weight paint is also take out the bottom of his hood there. That might be a problem. And in fact, I'm going to select the bottom part of his hood. that and oh, one more and let's give it a weight of like 0.2 0 should we just completely remove it yeah that'll do just completely remove it So uh, back to posing him. Just kind of uh, you haven't seen the, the pose that I'm working on here. I'm actually, going to use this hip. He uh, is good at the tightrope, so uh, this has a little bit of that. 
This is a, if he is standing up high somewhere. His cape will be extended out because he is epic and the wind is flowing through him. He's way up high anyway. See, that wasn't hard. And then I'm going to clip on his mesh and uh, I don't think he should be smiling or anything at all. He's just being epic right now. But uh, under the shape keys I will stick out his hidden blades. Something off on the left moved. That is uh, concerning. So take a look from the back, see if anything is being damaged. I'm not seeing too much damage, but you see something in there moving, right? Oh, okay. It's uh, his collar here. I go in and select this collar. I'm going to go to the basis with the collar selected. I'm going to save before I do this because this is a new technique I learned yesterday. I'm going to hit W with the collar selected and hit uh, Shape Propagate. So that should make it so that throughout all of the other shapes um, it should not move. There we go. So that is having the mouth move at the same time. Does that have no appear to? No. So in this one the mouth is moving. That is a lot harder to propagate because um, Another shape key moves the mouth. I'm going to grab the mouth here and just try and move it back manually. So bring the two about down here. Bring this top one back up like this. Bring it out slightly along the y axis. So hopefully uh, that won't be noticed much. Not much. I'm going to have him stick his hidden blades out and I hit the basis again, so in case I make any adjustments. Go like this. Oh, he's got like four arms now. I'm going to bring up my my camera. And you, you can see I already have some lights set up here. Your default is a single point light. So I recommend uh, hitting Shift A. Throat hurts. And um, going to lamp, and you can add in a sun from see, like this. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete that and uh, take my camera and move it to the first frame that Ezio is on, so that now my lamps are gone. And so it looks about like this. I'm going to hit render. And you will see that all you see is a silhouette because it's very dark. There's no lamps. There's a cool silhouette though. Um, so I hit Shift C to get my cursor at the center, hit lamp point. By default, you probably had this, and I completely forgot about it. But yours probably looks something like this. And I apologize for uh, not going over this sooner. What you can do is what I did at first, which is duplicate a buttload of those around. Uh, if you are going to do that, I recommend having one here, 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 and here on his right side and his left side. But uh, that is definitely not the professional way to do it. Uh, there is something they call three-point lighting, which I'm going to do with... Uh, so let's see how a sun looks first before I go into three-point lighting. So grab the sun, rotate it a bit, I'm just kind of bring it up there. Hit render, what does this look like? Uh, it looks alright, although uh, there are some pretty hard shadows. Let's see what happens if I hit sky. Do, 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 do. That didn't help much, all it did was put a sky in the background. Which uh, is really weird that that is an option. So I'm going to change this sun lamp to a spot lamp. And uh, if I render that just like this, uh, it is not a very powerful one. Uh, he looks dark, which is kind of cool, but uh, he's going to be up high. 
gonna change the energy here under the, uh, the lamp settings, I think, and change it to like five. I'll go to my top view period to rotate around the cursor. I'm going to turn one this way, and I'm going to hit Shift D. Turn one back to his other side. This one, I'll put the energy down to about one. Shift D again, and uh, put it. Out in front of him, do like a 0.5 on that one, maybe. I'm I'm not exactly a master at three-point lighting, but uh, I know what it is and just about how to do it. Uh, I get it wrong sometimes, so you can kind of see that there is a a good light coming in from this direction and some shadows over here, but not complete shadows uh, because there is a light facing up at him that would represent a uh, light bouncing off the ground and coming up to his face so that you can see that. Um, overall, this is a, this actually looks really good to me, uh, which is really nice. If you want, uh, uh, you could strengthen the lamp on this side to remove that shadow a bit. And if you want to see his face a bit more, which I might do, I'll increase the one at the bottom, but I think the one at the, his uh, left side uh, came out pretty good. So I'm going to delete that frame. I like that a lot. I might even take a picture of that with my phone because even though I'm going to make it easier to see, that is a pretty epic image right there. Might even take a screenshot. Of it. I mean, you got to admit, that's pretty cool. Let's see. Uh, let's get a new paint up. And just save it there for later. Another thing that you can do, uh, that I will explain as I change the lamps, change this one to about a 3, change this one down here to a 1, go ahead and save. Another thing that you can do is, if you render the image and you can see uh, the new lights now, I think that's really great, really awesome. So he is a chibi, uh, a low poly chibi, in fact. Uh, he's kind of a, a taller version of a chibi. Uh, extreme chibis are more round and then big-legged. This is a horrible picture because I'm lagging. Um, but if you like this cartoon sort of esque that he has, uh, you can go up here to your outliner and under the render tab. Not many people know about this. Uh, I'll see other people use this in videos, and there's always questions on how people did it. What we're gonna do is put an outline around him for like a cartoony effect. And people constantly wonder uh, how people do that when they do it. Uh, it's no big secret. It's actually really easy to do. Under the outliner, under the render tab here, there is something down here called post-processing and a button that says edge. If you click on that, it'll default to be at 10, but it is best to have on 1 in my opinion. And just by having that on, if I re-render this image, you'll see he now has uh, an outline around him, which is really cool if you ask me. Uh, I think I like that effect too much. People say that it has to be used at just the right times, and I'm the kind of person who probably abuses it. And uh, there is our awesome picture pose of Ezio. And so I'm going to take one more picture with my phone and actually just go over that last one and paint. This is uh, better, I think. Let's see. You can kind of see the difference in, in that. That is tough. Which one is better? That one's epic because of the shadows. And this one's awesome. Huh. So I'm going to leave this actually bump this back down to one because I like that shadow too much. Pretty sweet. I'm certainly enjoying this a lot. I hope you're enjoying it too and I hope that uh, I'm tolerable. Uh, I know that there are sometimes 
you know what? Maybe that outline isn't a good idea. I can't believe I'm saying it, but maybe that outline isn't a good idea. Some people are harder to tolerate in their uh, tutorials that they make um, for different reasons. Some people just aren't very lively. Um, this is a horrible thing to say, but I have come across a few tutorials where I have trouble understanding because of accents, but I, I would never blame someone for that. I'm just saying that uh, I hope that I was easy to understand and I was able to convey the different things that I'm trying to say to you in a manner that you can understand very well and fairly easily. And I hope that uh, your Ezio has uh, come out in a, a similar fashion and epicness. And so if I'm separating these parts out, I think um, that would be the end of this section before we move on to the actual uh, making an animation out of this. So about this render, by the way, um, it is hard to render it out as a PNG. That's why I often uh, take a screenshot. Uh, you have to render the animation while having the start and end be one. And uh, down here at the bottom, you can choose where it goes through this output. You choose where it goes through there. Type of file, PNG, um, whatnot. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and save, hit escape to leave that. And uh, yeah, I think I already told you that if you go to your, your rig here and select everything and hit Alt R, so it will reset all the rotation, Alt G will reset uh, all the movements. I guess I'm not done there. And then uh, Alt S will put everything back like that. Let's see what I broke. What did I break? I was just about done. Oh, um, it's that hood that I didn't put anything on. If I go like this. I'm going to go back to this section, hit select, go to this view. I'm just kind of outline this so I know which section I'm looking at. Go ahead and deselect everything. Select all of these in here. I accidentally select part of that coat there. Turn the screen down so I can do this easier. And now what I'm going to do is uh, first I'm going to delete that frame of, of drawing. Wish I could scroll faster there. And I'm going to assign it a weight of let's say 0 0.01. No point zero one. With a sign that should make it so that when it moved, it came along with it. However, it is such a, a slight, it is such a slight paint that uh, not much happens. I mean, something might happen over time, but he would have to go very far from his origin point to uh, have anything happen to his hood. So. Uh, that is that. I believe we are done here. And just for uh, curiosity's sake, I'm going to take these lamps here and move them to this layer. I'm going to bring up my original lamps I had. Uh, these are the lamps that I have set to be default in every uh, file I do in Blender. I want to see how that looks in a render with those lamps. Uh, much brighter. And uh, the pose changed. So you know that that uh, other one I set up isn't too bad. I kind of like it. It's nice. So, yep, I think uh, that's about all for now. Can't help but wonder what this is. Actually, I can't help but wonder. I'm tired and my throat hurts and... Uh, I'm sure that didn't come up for you. Uh, and I just, unfortunately, couldn't really care less right now. I don't see it here.
So I'm going to save, and um, I'm going to thank you again for watching all of these. Uh, I hope you are enjoying the series. I hope you are enjoying your character. I hope that you are actually learning something here, and uh, that you can become a part of the amazing world of 3D modeling and animation. It's definitely something that isn't easy to learn. Um, not very many people get to do it if you're still in school. Uh, your friends will be absolutely amazed by this. You just kind of have to devote a lot of time to it and away from those friends. So if you have a school project, sometimes you can make an animation for it and your class will go nuts over it. Uh, I try to do things like that, but back then I didn't know how to make characters, so my animations for class weren't all that great. And uh, I believe that's about all I have to tell you right now. So thank you, and uh, I will see you in the next bit when we try to actually make a, a scene or an animation. And I'll just go over the basic parts so as I don't waste up more of your time since this uh, whole Blender series is probably about three hours long, I think. And you can tell I'm really good at saying goodbye, so um, I'll see you next time.